My name is Khosr Saldaryan. Henry Young. My name is Ryan Skavnicki. I'm Yara. Dylan Kruger. My name is Matthew Lopez. My name is Garrett Ammerman. I was in uh, the design, design theory and pedagogy, and pedagogy program for, as a, my second master. I did two programs here. First one was MR2 program, and the second one was MS in design theory and pedagogy, pedagogy program in 2017, the first year it was offered. Design theory and pedagogy is the only program in SciArc that is related to theory and history because all the programs are related to design. It is very important that in a, one of the greatest design school that you can uh, go to a, a history and theory program to observe that how that uh, the history and theory related to design and how it can uh, affect uh, your pedagogy. I think. I think that the curriculum for the design theory pedagogy program is really interesting. We kind of get to explore all the different areas of what it means to teach, which is pedagogy and obviously design theory. There are different things I liked with each class because I learned something new each time. But my, I think the, one of the more impactful classes was the, one, the first history class we took. We were asked to do research in radical pedagogies. I took that opportunity to research about feminist pedagogy and I actually was able to uncover a history there. I found all about all these different women from early 20th century into the late 20th century who were very, very impactful when it comes to feminism and making sure that women were becoming more involved in architecture. So that's still something I'm you know, researching and pursuing today. At SciArc, I continued the research. I had already started at the Städelschule architecture class in Frankfurt. And I have been and I'm still extremely interested in emerging technologies and how they challenge our understanding of architectural representation. My work speculates on the ways of seeing, working with machine aesthetics, with virtual reality through storytelling techniques. The work I presented at the end of the year in SciArc Edge design theory and pedagogy program was entitled Leaky LA and it was a VR application and it was accompanied by a published text. It was mainly an exploration of using tools like photogrammetry, convolutional neural network and virtual reality and all of that through the use of game engine to see what these new medium, these new tools could bring to architecture representation and how it would challenge contemporary architecture discourse today. The project that I did for the end of the EDGE program, it's actually turned into something bigger than I kind of thought. An exercise on representation more so, but using elements that are not typically associated directly with architecture, so not roofs or gables, but things that you would see around an architecture piece. This took place in kind of a rural setting, so things like haystacks, barn equipment, things like that. So using those kind of elements, but using them in an architectural way to kind of show the difference between the two is a bit, a little bit negligible, that you can, you can use them both equally. Since then, it's actually taken on a little bit more. There's been four publications in school journals around the United States, presented at an ACSA national convention, and did a lecture at Kent State University. My final project for design theory and pedagogy was to develop an advanced level studio syllabus and mine was called Evasive Maneuvers. I wanted to research and investigate the notion of humor, the ironical side of architecture. So as a technique, I was looking into Bernard Pras, who specializes in anamorphic art who questions the concept of perspective, uh, meaning the spectator can only see the artist's intention at a certain directly single point of view, and if you get out of that point of view, you don't recognize it or you don't even know what the art is about. The discussions that we had throughout the design theory and pedagogies, each one of us have a different idea how to approach students and how to teach architecture, and uh, it was very interesting and very productive and constructive. Uh, discussions to make your own stand and say this is my point of view, this is your point of view, okay which one is more important, which one is less important, like that, that kind of discussion was really important. The project uh, was loosely called Compression in the Uncanny and looking at the uncanny as something that was simultaneously old and new. What I did was 
started sampling cross, various cross-sectional profiles, both from the site and also extradisciplinary objects, trying to blend those together using various subdivision modeling softwares. And through that, I was developing a technique called, that I was calling compression, where uh, the whole idea was about trying to intensify and, and enrich um, various architectural qualities. It, it kind of helped me form or rethink my own pedagogical model in that there should be something for me in terms of somewhere between technique and research. And that's something that I've you know, carried with me. I'm super interested in the role of the image in contemporary life and uh, I tried to craft a studio that was about students and then myself creating images that had the potential to hold architectural content and sort of gauge or, or work on their design from the image itself before moving on to things like program or uh, site even. Um, like it was all about crafting images and I think it was a really successful uh, brief and I got some great work out of it. Currently, I can take some of those interests and filter them down into different projects I'm working on. One of my studios introduces this idea of the role of architecture in social media and the role of architecture in uh, the, the image creation in general and how it can sort of exist as a backdrop for the contemporary image and sort of what agency uh, architecture can have by providing that image. A design theory and pedagogy project uh, looked at uh, both materials and uh, digital geometry to separate those and to uh, reapply the materials or the textures that would kind of inform or deform the original readings. Some of the projects we're working on have definitely been informed from some of those earlier conversations, starting with this kind of uh, idea of geometry and materials separately and then uh, bringing them together in, uh, or coalescing them back together in different ways. I can recount a lot of great memories. Coming here meant everything to my work. It gave me the platform that I needed to succeed. It gave me a platform to continue my research. So it nurtured the work that I already had. Coming to this program was really an effort to try to figure out how to do it on my own, both practice and teaching at the same time. When I actually talk to my students, I actually borrow a lot from there, from hidden closet and then draw from the design theory lectures and the notes and then try to showcase them. There are other points of view. You can experience a lot of different architects and faculty with totally different ideas and it's, I think it's very effective and it's very critical and you can understand a lot of different things from this diversity. This is only one point of view. You are the adult, you have to make a certain decisions on how to define your own architecture. There's many different types of pedagogies too, so we, have, we were able to study different array of people, so being able to look at them and then actually implement that has been really useful and beneficial for me. It challenged it to become even better, and now I think through my teaching I'm continuing that same research. So one memorable moment from my time here at SIRC would have been uh, teaching in the first year studio, actually being able to step back from uh, postgraduate conversations back into uh, teaching with first year students and having to kind of rethink fundamentals or having to rethink how we actually passed and what we're talking about as far as the fundamentals of architecture and how we pass those along and kind of the future of what architecture schools are teaching now. With my students, I will keep working on the same ideas that I was working on at SIRC.